Governor Rick Perry said he was sympathetic to the plight of unaccompanied minors crossing the border, but all the attention has shifted resources away from keeping crime out of his state. That is why today I am using my executive authority as governor of Texas and activating the National Guard. He said more than 200,000 criminal aliens have been booked into Texas jails since 2008. Under Perry's plan, which will cost about $12 million per month, the deployed units will serve in a support role, assisting state and federal officers already on the ground to spot illegal activity. We cannot discount the emotional toll and impact of the pictures we see every day from the American Southwest border. Video of kids climbing on freight trains for rides to an uncertain future. People being herded into immigration centers. The looks in the eyes of those who had zero idea what they were getting themselves into. Yet it's those pictures and stories, those anecdotes in many cases, that continue skewing the real story. Let's welcome to Midpoint, senior editor at The Federalist and a veteran journalist for outlets such as The Washington Post, L.A. Times, and The Wall Street Journal. Molly Hemingway joins us today on Midpoint. Molly, thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Molly, I want to start right out with a quote from The Federalist, and I want our viewers to see this as well. Anecdotes are obviously more powerful than data. They're personalized and real in ways numbers never will be. But anecdotes also provide a really cheap means of simultaneously avoiding rigorous thought and making yourself appear more compassionate or caring than everyone else. This law hurt this person, therefore we need to change that law. What, you don't care about that person and that person hurt? You must be a monster. Would you go into a little detail here on what brought that about and what specifically you are aiming that at? It's been interesting to follow these stories at the border. Uh, there were two stories that really brought this to mind. One was about Jose Antonio Vargas, who's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who's in this country illegally. He is friends with a lot of journalists and they really like him. And so they have been using his story as a means to push for changing the law. And then the other story, of course, is about the unaccompanied minors or families with minor children, where we are learning about just horrible things about their journey to the United States, uh, rape, murder, drug, drugs and whatnot. And the way these stories are told is as if there's only one answer to, to the problem. And that answer is to change policy in one particular way. And I reject that. I think that on the one hand, um, we're really missing out the stories of so many people who do not feel comfortable smuggling their children to this country, either ethically or they don't have the funds to do it. We are missing out on the consequences of uh, quickly um, bring people to this country without thinking about the health consequences or what it, it what it means to reward people for breaking laws and that concerns me greatly. Who is telling the stories in that it would seem are mostly based on and I've talked about this as well on this show rumors, innuendos, secondhand information and everything else we seem to hear other than facts. I'm not even saying that these stories are untrue. I read a great story for instance today from Kirsten Powers at USA Today and it is again all about children witnessing rape murder, being asked to smuggle drugs. But what I reject is this idea that because those things are happening, that therefore we should reward people for engaging in smuggling. That's, we make this quick leap between the heartbreaking, you know, heart tugging stories and a certain policy prescription that might in fact actually make the problem worse. And so I want us to not just be thinking about the stories of people who are here, but also the stories of people who aren't here. The stories of people who have come here legally and have worked very hard. People in my family who are immigrants who have worked very hard to become part of um, part of the fabric of this country legally. And I want to also uh, have us be thinking about all the unintended consequences of a quick change to policy that might, in fact, make the problem worse. What you just talked about on your own personal experience here of your family, is that what's really getting lost here? And I say that having talked to a number of people in Southern California, South Florida, other areas of the country whose families have come here legally, worked hard, went through exactly what they were supposed to. Many of these people now feel, well, what did we do? We came here and did it right, and here we are basically giving a full ride boat to whomever comes here illegally in any other way. So, so when we talk about your personal experience, is that where a lot of this is focused? I do think that this, that this speaks to why the media have done a bad job of being in touch with what a lot of Americans think. You can almost see it in the way that they cover this. They're frustrated that Americans don't actually agree with them, uh, that the Jose Antonio Vargas situation dictates some particular change. But if the only person you know who's an immigrant is an illegal immigrant who is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, it might skew the way you cover this, as opposed to if you actually know real immigrants who came here legally, or if you have lived in a border state where you're dealing with some of the problems, the trade-offs that come 
problem with um, a poorly controlled border situation. And so if you're out of touch with those real experiences that a lot of those of us who've lived in the West have experienced or those of us who have family members who have come here legally or have worked to be become legal once they have come illegally, that's a totally different experience than if you only know, you know, one illegal, illegal um person here. So does this then speak to the American public that is being in, in some ways perhaps fooled by the media? I don't think the, I think that the American public actually isn't being fooled and I think that the intractability of, of the opinion is very frustrating for journalists and other elites but I think what you're seeing here is people who you know who have that real day-to-day -day experience with the tensions with um, state budgets or with the trade-offs that come either in terms of health security or education and a poorly designed immigration policy we do probably all agree that we need to fix our immigration policy but how we do that is not a foregone conclusion and I think that the elites in DC and media and whatnot need to come to terms with that. As someone who writes about this and someone who has that, that familial background as well here, how do you then personally react when you hear people call this an invasion? Well, I don't know. I don't I think actually that's another thing though that everybody could work on improving the way that we talk about this. We're talking about humans, we're talking about our neighbors. We want to have the best possible outcome for citizens of this country and people who want to become citizens and also our neighboring countries and people throughout the world. Um, I think that the the language we use could be much more uh, civilized and humane and that we should we should work to keep calm and disciplined in all of that. What are the family issues that we're missing here? Because, and I'm going to throw this to you as well while I quote a couple of numbers here. We have 100,000 Americans lose a spouse or parent to deportation every single year. 11.7 million undocumented immigrants live in the U.S. Nearly one-fourth of undocumented immigrants, or about 3 million, have children or spouses who are U.S. citizens. Is that what we're missing here, and is that what you would like to see more covered? I think there, yeah, there are family splits happening all along the line. I mean, there are a lot of people who, a lot of children who have come to this country who should be reunited with their families. Uh, we should work on having a policy that enables families to stay together. We know the best thing for children is, in fact, if they can be with their mother and their father and in an intact family unit. And we should have a policy that recognizes that reality. And that's not going to happen if we are splitting families up. Would you not admit, though, that there certainly is the possibility? Because we have a lot of uh, unsavory elements that are involved in here. We have human traffickers that are involved in here. We've had reports of MS-13 gangs. We've had reports of so many different individuals crossing the border as part of this. Would you not at least say that it is worthy of those people who are concerned as to what's coming over the border and what is happening to their homes. I know people in Texas right now who, quite frankly, are scared to death of what's happening every single day. They are afraid next that something is going to cross the border, someone is going to cross the border that will take the lives of them, their families. Something will happen. That's what blows me away about these stories about saying, oh, these, these people are working with human smugglers who are involved in the drug trade, who rape people, who murder people. We should reward this by making it that that they get to do that again by bringing more people here and being involved in this type of criminal activity. It is, you know, we have to think about whether we really want to say that you you can do better by being involved with these types of thugs than by following the law and by working um, to go through the law as written. And if we want to change the law, changing the law. And of course, it's, it's, it's madness to think that this is a great policy to reward people who are, um, who are engaged in this type of activity. Of course, people would be scared and frightened and not just doesn't necessarily have to involve criminal behavior. It can just be the natural things that happen, such as, um, you know, transmission of health problems or whatnot. It is understandable that people would be reticent to, uh, to have this type of change without thinking through all of the consequences. In your opinion, then, i got about 90 seconds left. What needs to be done at this point? And again, I point this out by noting the immigration policy is not going to change overnight. We'll still be having this sort of a conversation a month from now because it's not going to happen immediately. So what needs to be done while well, in everything that we've talked about here, putting all this emotion together and putting some reality into it? If we really do care about children who are coming unaccompanied or families with young children who are coming, we should care deeply about getting the message out as quickly as possible that they have been misinformed that this is going to work out well for them we need to if we care at all I mean President Obama should frankly fly on a plane to some of these countries and just send the message personally I don't know where you got this idea but it's wrong do not be sending unaccompanied children across the border that have, would be loving have we already gone past the point where the people in those countries would even listen I think that, that you, know, you need to do something strong, you need to do something clear, but I don't think that we are past that point. I think we have failed to actually share that message as we should. It would seem as if perhaps that the other people in the South American countries and the governments there need to do some listening as well, wouldn't you agree? 
Absolutely. And they're not doing it either. Molly Hemingway from The Federalist, we thank you so much. We do appreciate it. Please come back and let's do this again. Thank you. All right. It is a point to make, too, that she makes about it. Vargas, but also the human traffickers are the ones that many people will tell you are at the very core of this crisis as well. We also point out, as we have many times, there's a tremendous amount of emotional stories that come out of a lot of these areas, and there's a lot of stories about diseases. A lot of it's not true. A lot of it is just that. A lot of it is emotion. A lot of it is secondhand information. A lot of it is rumor, and a lot of it is simply just passed on by politicians who aren't doing their homework to check and make sure that they're passing on the facts to you. It is a muddled situation. We'll continue to try and see if we can make some fact out of it all. Later on this hour, the very real chance that those who worked for GM and covered up the switch issues will be going to prison. You talk to us. We talk to you right here on Midpoint.